There we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spark Rentals Facebook Live and podcast. I'm excited because we have a guest, as you can see today. Last week, if you joined us, you um, know that we spoke all about the eviction process, um, which is and how to speed it up because so many of us get stuck in them. Um, and today you will see that we are speaking to Nick Disney. Um, he has 38 rental units and he has a family, three kids, wife, and um, we're going to just talk about how he got involved in real estate and whatnot. Please let us know where you're joining us from. If you have any questions, just pop them in the chat um, and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them as we go, go along. So um, with that being said, Nick, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in real estate and why. Sure. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't think the beginning of the story is too unique. I was looking to supplement my income and, you know, I read the classic books that everybody kind of you know, mentions that they read. And I was like, well, man, I think I can do this and started um, looking to buy the first one and, and figure out how to, you know, just make money through real estate is something that you do. Uh, you know, if you're still working, then you can just kind of do it part time. And, um, Bought the first property actually in, in Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, which is along the coast where I was living at the time. And, you know, now, now I live in San Antonio, which is where the main focus of the business and kind of, you know, where it's grown to, to have the properties where they're at now. Now, you, did, you didn't have a relative, a friend or anybody that kind of said, you know, this is what we're doing or like you just kind of read a book and said, I'm going to try this. I read a book and um, I read a bunch of them and then I didn't have any relatives or anybody that were kind of in the business I, where I used to eat breakfast, where I came out breakfast a lot. There was a guy who had done some. And so he kind of looked at the first property with me and that somehow, you know, it made me feel, I guess, better. And um, so I pulled the trigger and it, you know, it was an REO property years ago and, and needed some work. So I just, I moved in and started fixing it and it, you know, it's not the greatest deal of all time, but it worked <laughs> out and I learned an incredible amount and, you know, I had a lot of people who maybe weren't real estate focused, but they were very nice. Helped me out. Let me borrow tools and everything nice. um, to, to get it going. And once I figured out, well, Hey, okay. You know, I made some mistakes, but it still worked out well. And then, then I just moved forward and met more people and, and kind of started growing from there. Gotcha. Describe like one of those mistakes and how you overcame that, or what did you learn from it? You know, I, I think I've, man, there's so many that I have <laughs> done and just kind of, you know, came out. Okay. I think trying to fix them myself, uh, I'm quite handy. I can fix a lot of stuff. You know, I've been doing it. I've been doing it my whole life. And I thought, Hey, this is a great idea. It, what I learned as I went along for me, yes, I can do a lot of it, but I'm not as good as the other guys that do it. It takes me a lot longer to get things done. And so in the end it takes me more. Yes. I probably save some money on labor, but it takes me a lot more time. And I, most of the time I'm not doing as good a job as they would have done. So I think that where I was naive thinking that I should be the one in there fixing a lot of these things, it wasn't really the best, the best choice. Uh, that was a key learning that I kind of had to get over. And, um, you know, I think, um, there's been man, so many from, from point A to now. What, um, how, how did you even buy your first property? Like the, the financing end of it and, mm -hmm. and all of that, that like. The, the first one was super standard cookie cutter. I, you know, I had saved my 20%. I put it down. Um, I knew very little about what I was doing, but they, they gave me a loan uh, to buy the property. You know, it was, it was a fixer upper, but it wasn't one of those just completely destroyed houses. Right. Um, a lot of cosmetic work. And 
I mean, I, I felt like I was doing the right thing, but without having done it, you just really don't have a confidence. And so there was a lot of, I think I'm making the right choices and, and I hope for the best. And so it was 20% down and bought it and moved in and, you know, fixed it up. I mean, it's a little, it was a, like a 12, 1200 square foot house. I mean, it's a little house and fixed it up. And then when I moved, I sold it and had a little profit and I thought, Hey man, this, this is all right. I can maybe do this again. So Here's you live in flip. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Which right. also I probably would never do again. But, <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that was before you got married. So uh, funny story. Like, um, no, we didn't live together and I bought it and I moved in and it, so it needs a lot of work. And um, one other key learning that my wife moved down there to move in with me and she moves in, but I was, I was fixing it. I was working and I come back and fixed it at night. So you know, I had to take a lot of stuff off. Um, you know, all the doors had holes in them where they'd been kicked in or they were broken. So I was like, I remember thinking, I'll just take all these doors off. And I just, I, I tossed them because I need to get new ones, but I hadn't got them yet. And so she moves out. I wouldn't think anything about it, right? And she moves in like, you know, it's like an hour later. And she's like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need at least one door in, in the house. And um, I'm going to front door. But um, she was like, I know you're going to have to go buy me a door. So that was one of the first things I fixed after she moved in. And then they moved in. I was partway done and I finished it. Um, yeah. With Very us. Cool. Now, how did you transition from there to buying your first rental property? I, I think, you know, I mean, I read a lot and I think that education part is incredibly important. So I read a lot of books, but I read about a lot of people having success and I, I wish I would have taken it. It's hard, but I wish I would have taken action sooner. Um, but I read a lot and I knew that what I wanted was cash flow. That was really my goal. So how can I create it? And I, at that time, I thought, well, the best thing I could do would probably be rental property for cash flow. And so I moved here and I was looking around. I looked and I looked and I looked and I, uh, I even went to some local events around and talked to more people. And I got introduced to some other people that were explaining how they were doing their rentals. And I was like, I just know that, I mean, I really believe that it works. And so uh, yeah, I knew I wanted to own the rentals. And so then it was just, I bought the first one um, and it needed a, a little bit of work, but not much. And um, now did you let the experts do it this time? Or did I did. I did. <laughs> yes, um, I did. Uh, I thought, you know, it was like a few thousand dollars of work. I thought I was doing this major flip project. <laughs> it was not quite that, that quite um, that great. But we did it and I leased it myself, um, you know, with just signs out and signs around the, the neighborhood. And some, you know, I got super fortunate, great first tenants and they moved in, they paid. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, I paid my mortgage. They, you know, they paid me and now I have this money. I'm like, this is fantastic. How many times can I do this? You know? Where did you find that first rental property? How did you find the deal? I found that one through a real estate agent. You know, it was, it was a long time ago. It was a lot easier at that time to find investment properties that were listed on the MLS. So that was straight, that was straight off the MLS. Um, and that the agent that I found, I met just through talking to people and networking. Actually, my barber actually was like, Hey, this other guy comes, he, he does, <laughs> he, he introduced me and the guy was awesome. And he kind of just took me under. He's like, look, this is how this will go. He had several rentals at the time. And he walked me through all of that. I mean, those were even his contractors. He let me use that fixed it. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but he, he also let me just kind of get in there and try to lease it and bump my head. And, and I got it leased and was, you know, self-managing it. That's how I found it. Uh, I think the first one, at least the first three, four or so all were off the MLS. Um, okay. You know. Now, now do you we, still have that one? I sold that one. I sold that you one. Sell it. Um, I sold that one not I want to say not too long ago. I think it was like 2018 now when I started to think about it. But uh, I did sell that it was a great property. Um, you know, it it had gone up and it was just I thought there's a better spot to put the cash, you know, the equity that was in there. So I sold that one. Um, but I've still got some from 20 2011, 2012, 2013, like, you know, right in that range. And um, 
I mean, you guys know, I mean, over time and the values have gone up and, and yes. you know, what we could purchase them for then was substantially less. And, and so it really, it really adds to that, that net worth, you know. How do you go about finding properties now? So now it's pretty much all marketing. So my website, sellmysanantoniohouse.com, it, you know, we're looking for people who are motivated to sell, um, we advertise mainly online and then some of it's word of mouth because we, you know, we do have the rentals, but also we've rehabbed a lot of properties and, you know, and we've bought some and sold them over finance. So there's other parts of the business. So, but the vast majority we market direct to sellers um, online, you know, for whatever reason they need to sell, you know, we buy houses in San Antonio and then they reach out to us. Nice. So you're pretty well known out there. I mean, I think we're okay, you know, uh, probably a little better around San Antonio. Uh, it's a big city. Right. So there's lots of, there's lots of good investors here. Uh, but we, we actively market online for properties, not only that we would want as a rental, but ones that uh, we may create a note of, or we may flip that house or we may sell that house, you know, to another investor or someone else. Now, do you um, make phone calls? you know and or do the driving for what is it driving for dollars brian <laughs> so i think i've tried about everything um i've never i've never been big on you know just knocking on doors i don't have anything against it it just wasn't for me um i've used to do a lot of direct mail where we would you know market out you know we buy houses um and that worked really well for a long time and then and it just started to decline i guess it's probably four years ago just really started like we weren't getting the results we weren't getting the calls um i myself was just getting stacks of letters sent to me just being an absentee owner or you know and some free on, on all these mailing lists and so decided to transition and really focus online and so then we put out our message you know we buy houses and and people want to sell a house for cash you know we'll, they'll, we'll google it up and find us and, and give us a call very cool and we have um, a question from a, oh, a audience member here anil says uh what is your opinion on reo properties in this current seller's market do you expect any foreclosures under the blanket that might pop up in the near future yes i do um so in it i know it's it's different per state and we used to buy here so i live in san antonio which is in bear county and we used to buy at the bear county foreclosure auction the first tuesday of the month we go down there for for those foreclosures um obviously with everything that's happened in the last couple of years there was just very few properties for sale there in general because they weren't being foreclosed on well those foreclosures are still there um and so i think in my opinion um a couple of things will happen right now there's less properties to come up for sale there so when there's less properties it drives the prices up and so people are paying and it's not they're not really in my opinion they're very very good deals for most of what's there but eventually those foreclosures will come and that will mean there'll be more foreclosures available at like a trustee sale or a foreclosure sale but a lot of those are will be sold back to the bank and then those banks will put those out there into the market um it, they have to come back it, it, you know if they're there it, even though it's getting pushed back more and more they're starting to open up more um and we're starting to see a few more at least locally where i'm at and i think eventually then that will come to you know where you see like the reos where the real estate agents have them listed on there it's it's i i believe the same thing i think that it's going to be interesting to see the inventory change well, especially if we have a recession hit over the next right. year i i think you all are very accurate um it could it could get really interesting the the trustees that i've talked to the, the trustees uh, for anybody who doesn't know the trustees are the person that actually does the auction down there so they they have a lot of insight on on when those properties are coming and they you know and they said you know the big some of the big big holders the big banks just haven't haven't decided to foreclose on theirs yet but eventually you know they will and that puts a lot of more supply 
out there. So it's got to drive the prices down some. And and to your point, you know, then you also have a recession, then there's probably less people available to buy. So that could get quite interesting. Absolutely. Now, just out of curiosity, we haven't talked too much about this. How do you fund now? Okay. So, well, um, mainly two things, right? So we do, we will use local banks. I'm a big fan of local banks. Um, another thing I wish I would have learned sooner. Why do I like the local banks? Um, cause you can build a relationship with them. They do get to know you over time and they will look at your business and it's not, it, it, you do have to perform on paper, but there's more to it than that. And they will, they will hold the mortgages there with them. So they don't have to have them formed to something that they can resell. So that has been super helpful. And so the, the short story of that is some of the rentals that we own are now paid off. And so we could take, you know, say six of those rentals over to, you know, bank of Brian and say, Hey, you know, we'd, we'd like a line of credit. We'll give you these rentals as collateral. They think that's great. And cause they love having those assets. And so those lines of credit, they really function like cash for us. You know, I mean, we let them know how much we need. They put the money in the bank and we can go buy what we need to. Um, and if it's something that we refinance or something that we sell, you know, that money comes back in and you put it back in the line. And so the line just, it kind of goes out, but it gives you access to a lot of cash. Um, right. The second part is, you know, private lenders that are here locally. Um, those relationships are, they're great. They take, they often take a while to get going. Um, but once you meet and you, you talk to them and they feel comfortable with you, I mean, there's a lot of people with a lot of money and if you can, if you can put it in a good spot and you can show that you can do what you say you're going to do, you know, there's a lot of people that will lend you money, you know, over and over. I like the fact that you mentioned personal relationship because I think because of the internet right now and online and whatnot, we have lost a little bit of that, but there is some positive mm -hmm. attributes to that. So it's, it's kind of a good piece of information for people. Yeah. And so Anil followed up with a question here saying, um, since home prices have uh, skyrocketed, uh, will lenders sell properties directly to make more money rather than foreclose? Um, so Anil, they actually, lenders can't do that. Uh, lenders don't own the properties themselves. They only have a lien on the properties. So lenders can't, uh, they can only foreclose to force the sale to recover money. They can't actually sell properties without going through the foreclosure process. Uh, just as a quick clarification point there for uh, audience member. Uh, Nick, do you have any uh, parting words of advice for either beginner real estate investors or intermediate investors who are trying to scale their investing up to the next level? I, I think for the beginning investor, and uh, I say this having, having gone through and made plenty of uh, all my own mistakes, I think, you know, you need to commit. Education is important. You want to know what you're doing. But a, a lot of people I talk to, you, you have to make that commitment to the first property. Just one. Just one property. Just commit if you're really going to do it and, and you need to buy that first property. You do not need to hit a home run. I didn't hit a home run. You know, most people don't. OK, a nice single. Maybe you get lucky in a double. It's great. But you really need to commit and focus on what you're going to buy as that first property. Don't get distracted by you need to do this or that and this and that. And there's 15 things. Really focus on what you're going to buy. Drill down. Commit. Just buy one. Right. And if you decide real estate it's not for you, it's OK. But it's it's always the hardest. Um, scaling. Scaling for me, the biggest thing was the money. Um, we had the ability to do the to do the rehabs and we were locating enough properties. And I actually, I talked to a very successful investor here and I, you know, this was a long time ago and he's like, Oh, you're gonna need more money. And I really thought, yeah, I'm not gonna need more money. We're gonna be great. Turns out I need more money. You're very much right. Just if, if you really want to scale access to capital, it's what's, it's what slowed me down. And I think really focusing on how are you going to do that part? And how are you going to do that? If you want to do it with a certain amount of speed, then you have to have a certain type of capital that you can access quickly. And um, I love the idea of the local banks and it's been super helpful for my business to use them. Um, and there's probably somewhere, someone, you know, if you don't know someone at the bank, 
I actually learned it from an investor that was here locally. And he, he taught me about it. And he was like, yeah, well, here's actually how that really works. I was in the wrong mess. And so I think the access to capital, if you want to scale, is, is usually critical and really, really want to focus on that point. No, it's, it's great advice. Yeah, it is. So we put a link in the comments here to uh, sellmysanantoniohouse.com uh, where people can connect with you. Uh, any other ways that uh, audience members can connect with you and maybe uh, buy uh, wholesale or turnkey properties from you? Uh, I mean, definitely if, if you're interested or if somebody's got a question and, you know, and I can answer it, shoot me an email. Um, it's Nick at, and then it's the website. I'll spell it out, sellmysanantoniohouse.com. And the number's on the website. If you're driving your car and you want to give me a shout, that's all right too. If I can, if I can grab it, I'll grab it. Um, if, if somebody was looking to buy a property or, you know, buy a property, buy a note, or if there's, if there's just a question that I can answer that you think will help you, give me a shout or shoot me an email. I'll, I'll do my best. Um, and you know, we never know. Almost everybody can help everybody else out in some way. So. Absolutely. It can be a good team sport. Absolutely. I believe in that. Awesome. Well, Nick, I thank you so much, so much. Um, I love doing these interviews because I learned something new and I'm sure our audience does as well. So I, I do want to thank you very much. And I guess that is it for this that Tuesday. Works. So I will. Hey, my uh, pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks. thanks. And thank you everybody for joining us and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Have a good one.